Hello and welcome to the Bottom Up Podcast. I'm your co-host, Mike Parsons. And as always, I'm joined by Chad Owen. Are you ready to design your survey in SurveyMonkey, Chad Owen? Oh, you mean I can finally go to SurveyMonkey.com and play around? Good point. So for all of our listeners there, follow Chad's very wise advice. You are very welcome to just enjoy the show in its audio form. But if you'd like to get the most out of this show, jump into surveymonkey.com, create a free account because we're going to be poking around in there and sharing with you some best practices on how you might design your survey and design it well. Now, as a way of introduction, as everybody is scrambling around typing in surveymonkey.com, I have to say the reason this episode is going to save you time and money is Like many things in life, once you get into it, you realize it's going to take you a lot more time to do it properly than you first thought. Have you had this experience, Chad Owen? Yes. I always get something wrong. I either ask the wrong question, I leave an answer out, I send it to the wrong people. There's always something that goes wrong. I had a time once where I forgot to make a number of questions compulsory so that in the survey they were skippable. And I remember I couldn't work out. There was like, I don't know, two or 300 people had completed the survey, but I would have like only three quarters of people answered a question. I'm like, this is the weirdest thing. And I realized that I had left the mandatory, like the question must be answered radio button. I hadn't ticked it. <laughs> and I was like, oh no. They probably spent three or 400 extra dollars on those useless answers. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is why Getting the design right matters because if you think it through and do it rigorously once, there's a huge benefit here, isn't there, Chad? Yeah. My mantra with surveys is KISS, keep it simple, stupid. So if this is your first one, try a survey with just two questions. That's it. You can always send out another survey later, but if you're just trying it out for the first time, I would say, you know, pick either one of SurveyMonkey's templates which you'll see have very few questions. So the MPS survey is just one question that's mandatory. And then there's a follow-up if you want to type in your thoughts or leave a comment. And even if you're not going to use one of the SurveyMonkey templates, I'd advise you to look through them because they have seen millions of surveys designed and know what a good survey looks like. And so you can use those as inspiration. And so if you follow this line of thinking that we're on, What we're really saying is, look, getting a survey right takes time, but there's a great feature inside of surveymonkey.com. If you just go to the create a new survey tab, what you'll see is you're going to be presented with a couple of really important options. One, copy a past survey. Now, this one works really well. If you've got like a corporate branding in your survey and you design a nice template, you can just copy that template that you've made for a previous one. You can just copy a survey and it picks up the questions, the look and feel and makes a new survey. Saved you heaps of time. So this is one way to move fast with surveymonkey.com, copy a past survey. If you want to be a bit more structured about it, the second option you have is start from a template. So you can actually build custom templates. So you say, use our corporate branding, use this branding or whatever look and feel is appropriate. Here's all the demographic questions we ask every single person. Yes. And it's right there, Chad, that once you've rigorously built a template, you should have like warning signals going off. If you hit the start from scratch button in SurveyMonkey, (laughs) you should just be like, hang on, Mike and Chad said, touch this as a last resort. Grab a coffee and be in it for the long haul. (laughs) Because it really, you, you have to rebuild everything, the look and feel and the questions. Now I'm thinking to myself, okay, I followed Mike and Chad's advice. I opened up a survey. There's a couple of key things here when you're building a survey that I think we should touch on. And if you look down the left-hand side of SurveyMonkey, you're in a survey, you will see that you can click on the question builder and it gives you all these different choices. And I think it's important that we sort of call out what these are for. Invariably, I think you're going to find yourself going for multiple choice as a starting point. Chad, wouldn't you say that's the survey classic, the good old multiple choice? Yep. That and or the radio boxes where you can only choose one. Yeah. Now you can start to get a little bit more fancy. I think one of our favorites is the rating scale where you say to someone, 
one being terrible, 10 being great, can you please rate your customer experience for us? Now, what's interesting about that is that you get a little bit more nuance than just, you know, click which option best describes your customer experience, good, bad, otherwise. You start to get more accurate statistical data that can be very helpful. Now, once you go beyond just asking questions, you can actually build into your survey stimulus. What we mean by stimulus is you could show someone a picture and say, tell us what you think. So you can actually embed not only images using the question builder, you can actually embed video, all sorts of content and so forth. And this is where you really start having like a rich quant survey where you're not only asking them about themselves, but you're actually providing them with stimulus and starting to give feedback. Now, Chad, we've done a number of design thinking workshops where after the first day, we've actually put the work out to survey overnight so that when we come in on the second day, we already get like a global point of view. Do you want to maybe talk about what we've done and how we've done that? Because that's a great thing to design into your survey. So essentially, we spend a whole day working in collaboration with customers to figure out what their pains and gains are and what they want for a particular solution. And rather than just, you know, go home and sleep on it the first night, we actually have SurveyMonkey do all this work for us. So at the end of the first day, we come up with an image and a headline to kind of represent whatever our best idea is to solve the customer's pains and give them the gains that they're seeking. So maybe we have four or five different versions of that. We send it out to a couple hundred survey participants, recruited by SurveyMonkey, by the way. And then we can come back in the morning and have all of this rich data around work that was only completed the day before. And it's just as simple as uploading an image and asking a question. It could be a rating or it could be a forced ranking. There's a number of ways that you can do it on SurveyMonkey. You can even, in your surveys, ask the user to upload content and share that with you as well. You can even go as far as creating all sorts of things like logic. So if people identify as being from, say, the East Coast, they fill out a different set of questions to those that come from the West Coast. I also think another great practice in design is break up your survey. If you've got 15 questions, I'd break it up into three parts of five questions each. Because if you put all the questions on a page, there's this weird thing where it freaks users out. They're like, wow, that's a lot of questions. But you could ask the same question in three steps and they think that's totally fine. (laughs) I don't know what that is, but it's like, just make it digestible. And you can do all of these things inside of SurveyMonkey. I think the real point here is it takes a lot of effort to build a survey. I think, Chad, we probably have out of all the work we do across all the offices, maybe five templates that we use most of the time. Yeah, and we might just swap in a question or two. But yeah, it could take an hour or two to get this survey created the first time. But as Mike was saying, if you're hitting that start from scratch button every single time, you're doing something wrong in SurveyMonkey. Yeah, avoid at all costs. All right, Chad, I think this was a big time-saving episode, don't you? Yeah, and the... Most important part, I think, is actually what comes next, which is going to be previewing the survey and double, triple, quadruple checking the survey before sending it out. So stay tuned for that episode coming up next. Yes, indeed. Now, if you want anything else, any goodies, archive shows from the Bottom Up podcast, just jump on to your browser and go to bottomup.io and you can find all the goodies there. All right. Thanks from Chad and I. This is another episode of the Bottom Up podcast.